Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're going to be going over the Ram 1500 and the 6.4 Hemi engine, and we're going to go over a couple things. We're first going to get into the 6.4 Hemi itself, and then the 1500, and then why both of them have not been married in a beautiful union that we all want, and why this union most likely will never happen. So, yeah. I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory. Let's get into the video. Let's actually talk about the 6.4 Hemi itself. So this engine has been used for quite some time, but it did have a predecessor, if you could say that, and that was the 6.1 liter V8 Hemi. Now that one was used in the original SRT8 Grand Cherokee and then the Dodge Challenger and Charger. And it was just a really cool engine, right? It was Chrysler going, hey, you guys, oh, and also the SRT8 Chrysler 300. I almost forgot about that one. But anyways, coming back, Chrysler was like, hey, you want crazy high horsepower, all that kind of stuff? Here you go. Here's a big obnoxious V8, gets horrible gas mileage, but you're going to have a ton of fun. People loved it. So then they went back to the drawing board and they changed some things with the engine. They made it a little bit bigger. So now they have more power and it's actually more reliable compared to the 6.1 liter V8, which is another cool benefit of the 6.4. And now that it has more power and is more reliable they use it in more vehicles we sadly do not have an srt8 chrysler 300 anymore but we still have an srt challenger and charger we've got a grand cherokee now we have the wrangler and we have the durango and obviously people have made renders of like a pacifica with it which is pretty funny like a wide body pacifica also with the hellcat engine there's lots of funny stuff that happens online but they've put it in a ton of different vehicles and so a lot of people have been wondering why is it not in the ram 1500 i mean you can even get a 6.4 Hemi in the 2500 and 3500. Now that is a different engine, but it's still a big 6.4 Hemi and you don't have that in the 1500 itself. And so it's kind of confusing. And the thing that makes it even more confusing is they've thrown the Hellcat engine in the 1500. And the Hellcat engine obviously is in most of the lineup. You can get it in the Charger, the Challenger, the Grand Cherokee, the Durango, and the TRX. But you can't get that in a regular 1500 and you can't get a 6.4 Hemi in a regular 1500. So what's preventing Ram from doing this? Now let's actually talk about why they haven't shoved the 6.4 Hemi into the new Ram 1500 and why they most likely won't. So there's quite a few reasons. First off, we need to look at why people buy trucks. Now, typically there are several things that are important to people when they are purchasing trucks and when they're buying a truck. The biggest reason is towing and payload capacity. And then also a lot of people, they worry about reliability with trucks because it's such an expensive vehicle. And usually because of the expense, people plan on keeping it for a longer period of time. And so they need to make sure that it's a reliable vehicle. And so let's talk about all those aspects. So from the reliability angle, the 6.4 Hemi actually does a really good job. It's proven itself in the Charger, Challenger, and Grand Cherokee because it's been in those for quite some time and high mileage examples still do really well. And it seems like it's just as reliable as the 5.7 Hemi. So that doesn't seem like that's an issue but the towing and payload capacity is where we run into the issue. So with the 6.4 Hemi, you think, oh, well, it should be fine. It's gonna tow more than a 5.7 Hemi, so it'll make the truck even more practical. So yeah, that should be good for people, but it's not that simple. With a Dodge Durango SRT versus a Dodge Durango RT, it looks like that's the case because a Dodge Durango RT tows about 7,400 pounds and the SRT tows about 8,700 pounds but they're not close to the max payload to towing capacity ratio and all that kind of stuff. And here's what I really mean. If we go to the truck perspective, a Ram 1500 with a 5.7 Hemi and 392 gears with a standard configuration that most people buy, which is a four door truck with a bigger sized back doors and a 5.7 bed tows about 11,000 pounds, just a little bit over that, okay? Now here's the problem is that is at the upper end of the payload capacity of the truck in terms of the towing. So when you do tow a trailer, you're gonna have some transfer from the trailer to the truck on the payload. And it's about 10% if it's a bumper pull. So if you have a regular 1500 and you're towing an 11,000 pound trailer, then you're gonna be using up 1100 pounds of the payload. Fifth wheel transfers about 15%. So let's just make math a little bit easier for me right now because I'm just doing this all on the spot. If you have a 10,000 pound fifth wheel, then you're gonna have a transfer of about 1,500 pounds to the payload from that trailer. Now the Ram 1500 with most configurations is around, depending on the truck, 1,200 pounds to 1,500 pounds for the payload capacity. And if you get like a stripped down version, you're right, you're in the 1,700, 1,800 pound payload capacity, but most of them, 1,200 to 1,500 pounds is a pretty safe bet. Now this is where the problem lies. The 6.4 Hemi weighs more than the 5.7 Hemi. 
and because of that it's going to take up some of the truck's payload and so if you put the 6.4 hemi in the ram 1500 the towing capacity would actually have to be decreased because the truck wouldn't have enough payload capacity to tow more weight than what the truck can currently tow. And so if Ram were to throw this engine in the Ram 1500, they would actually make it less capable because of their payload constrictions. And so that's one of the biggest reasons why they haven't put this in the truck yet is it actually decreases the capability of the truck. And the Ram TRX is a great example of that. My Ram TRX only has a payload capacity of a thousand pounds because of how much the Hellcat engine engine weighs, which makes the truck not that practical from a towing perspective. Now the truck makes up for it and it's awesome factor, right? It's got crazy off-road capability. It's super fast and all that kind of stuff, but there's only so many truck people that are looking for that. There's more truck people looking for something that tows well and has a good payload versus people that just want a high performance truck. Now, aside from making the truck less capable, there's some other stuff that Ram would run into. So first off, the 6.4 Hemi obviously has more power than the 5.7 Hemi, and it might be just enough power that certain components on the truck would fail. A really good example would be the axles. So when they were developing the Ram TRX, they went through so many different types of axles because the truck had so much power and just kept snapping them. Huge issue when you have 700 horsepower, but even 485 horsepower and you know around 485 pound-feet of torque would probably be what it would have because usually with trucks they want the horsepower and the torque to be pretty similar, sometimes even more torque than horsepower. And so when you have that much power and torque, they might snap the stock axle and so then they'd have to figure something out. Now obviously the TRX is a great lesson for them and so it probably happened pretty fast, but that's still more engineering cost going into the truck rather than just plopping the engine in. So that's definitely something that needs to be taken into account. Something else that needs to be taken into account is the fuel economy, right? Now with the TRX, obviously that thing has atrocious fuel economy and people that are buying it understand that. The problem isn't the buyers, the problem is governments. So obviously as time goes on, governments become stricter and stricter in terms of fuel economy ratings and obviously greenhouse gas emissions and the 6.4 Hemi would not be helping out with that whatsoever. And because this truck would most likely be less expensive than a Ram TRX, then you're going to have the situation where probably more people would be purchasing it, which sounds good. But then if more people are purchasing it, then it lowers uh, where Ram sits on their fuel economy rating as a brand, which doesn't look good to the government. And if they go below a certain threshold, which they aren't allowed to go below, then yes, that is first that causes some serious trouble. So that's another thing that kind of pushes them away from it. And then the last thing is engine availability. The 6.4 Hemi is not really all that available right now, and this is probably the biggest reason as to why Ram hasn't put it in the 1500. So there are certain markets that used to have the 6.4 Hemi available in certain vehicles, and they can't get them anymore. I might be wrong on this, uh, fact check me if I am, but I was recently reading something that Australia, for the most part, can't get any vehicles with a 6.4 Hemi, and especially if you live in Australia, let me know if this is not true, uh, but just because of availability of that engine, they pretty much took it out of that market. And there are other markets which something is happening similar to that, and so there's just availability issues, and I think a really good example is the SRT Wrangler. So something that is interesting that I found out from a lot of my friends that work at Jeep dealerships is they aren't getting like any SRT Wranglers. And this isn't like the dealership trying to just order vehicles. These are dealerships that had deposits from customers that had orders in the system and Jeep has come back and said, yeah, we can't build that many of these. We're going to have to get rid of some of your orders. And it's been literally a three to four times multiplier. So for example, if a dealership has 10 um, allocations that they're actually getting of the SRT, they probably put in 40 orders for the SRT Wrangler. And again, Jeep's coming back and saying, yep, I know you have 40 people that have deposits that are ready to buy this vehicle. We can only give you 10 of them. And so, yeah, there's, there's um, availability issues with that powertrain in general. And so that's another big reason why they haven't thrown it in the truck is they're struggling to keep up with the status quo of the current vehicles they're building with that engine. And so throwing that engine into another vehicle, it would make it even harder for them to keep up. And then realistically, they probably wouldn't be able to keep up at this point. And that's obviously a factor due to COVID and it's caused availability issues with a bunch of stuff. Uh, but yeah, the 6.4 Hemi is no different. And so it kind of fits into that category. Now, the last issue that I see with 
putting the 64 Hemi in a 1500 is going to be pricing, like where would Ram price this engine? And here's what I mean. So if you look at a base model TRX, it's about $70,000. Now it doesn't have the nicest interior, but it's still a nice interior. And you get a 702 horsepower off-road machine. Now, if you look at a fully loaded Ram 1500 Limited, it's about seventy dollars to $75,000. So you could either get Ram's nicest luxury truck, or you could get the entry-level version of their crazy high-performance truck for about the same amount of money. But let's say that they offer the 64 Hemi as an option you can get on the higher-end packages with the Ram. So let's say you can get a Limited with the 64 Hemi. Now that Limited, is probably going to be at least five to ten grand more than it is now. So that seventy to seventy-five thousand dollar limited is eighty to eighty-five thousand dollars, and at that point, it's like a middle of the line TRX, which you could actually have a pretty similar interior on the TRX at that point as that limited would have. And at that point, most people would just buy the TRX, and so Ram would be pretty much arbitrarily offering this high-performance engine in the limited and there would be no reason for people to buy it right do you want to have 700 horsepower or 485 horsepower for about the same amount of money right it it's not necessarily an easy sell and it doesn't necessarily make sense now the argument could be said that some people would still rather have the limited because they want to have a street truck and they just prefer the look of that but i think if most people were given the opportunity and they and someone came up to them and said do you want 485 horsepower or 702 horsepower for the same amount of money and the interiors are going to be roughly the same right the limited might have a little bit nicer interior but they're going to be about the same at that price point which we need to take everyone's going to go for the 700 horsepower truck right that's it just makes logical sense but then the other argument could be made that well they'll offer it in the laramie and the rebel and they could offer it in the laramie or rebel uh, but again the problem with that is most people purchase those trucks because of the towing and payload capacity and if this engine decreases the towing and payload capacity then those trucks aren't as usable and so yeah it's it's just kind of like it, it's an engine that it seems like a really cool idea but it, it's just hard to fit it into the lineup and then it's hard to fit it in the lineup at a price point that really makes sense for the 1500 and so at this point i think they're just going to keep things as they are and it's like if you want a high performance ram you get the trx if you want a capable ram then you don't get the trx right you get something else that actually has towing and payload capacity and so yeah those are my thoughts on the 6.4 Hemi, and that is why Ram really hasn't put the engine in the 1500 and why they most likely will never put the engine in the 1500, sadly. I want you guys to let me know in the comment section below what you think about this whole situation and maybe also what you think Ram could do to make it work. As always, if you're stopping for the first time, please subscribe, comment down below what you think, and then if you do feel like my videos are of value to you, I'd really appreciate your support on Patreon. I'll include a link to that in the description down below. I'll see all of you guys in that next video.